This is great. Uh, my name's Lars and I'm here with my partner, Travis, from Salesforce. Uh, we are a revenue advisory firm based in Northern California, San Francisco area, but we definitely operate globally. And very much so under the assumption that pipeline uh, is what drives predictability in your business. And to generate pipeline, you have to prospect. Um, and in order to prospect fact, in the modern world, you have to have a series of technologies, processes, and people that can fill your pipeline. And what we wanted to do today was spend seven to 10 minutes with you and explain uh, three infographics that we have that will help you understand uh, the very latest and the most modern take on high velocity account-based demand generation and prospecting. Uh, so with that, Travis, I'd love for you to bring up our first infographic in the series, um, one that will help people understand if they are a candidate for an account-based sales development approach. Absolutely, Lars. So this is the first step in our minds when you're thinking about an account-based sales development model. It's a great model when your business is a fit uh, when your deal dynamics match, and when a few other factors actually line up uh, to make account-based sales development make sense for your business. So we put together this decision tree that makes it really easy to think about if you're a fit for this model or not. Um, there's several different points that we make on this infographic, but I would say the two most important when companies ask me if ABSD is right for them uh, number one is thinking about your average selling price and more particularly about your lifetime value of a customer. Because what you're doing when you introduce an account-based sales development model is you're inherently increasing the cost of sale. And you need to make sure that the lifetime value of the customers you're going out and capturing are going to make it worthwhile to increase that cost of sale. And you can see here that if your average selling price is let's say between 1,000 to 20,000, um, you're probably not a great fit for account-based sales development. Uh, you're much better off feeding that lead, feeding that outbound motion through a single sales team and not introducing the added cost of an SDR into the equation. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you're selling six and even seven figure deals, uh, with equivalent lifetime values in those accounts, then it's highly likely that account-based sales development might be right for you because you can afford that additional function. Another critical piece to think about, there are several here, uh, but thinking about your typical sales cycle length, right? Think about doing a self-service model in, in your consumer life, in your own personal life, and you go to Amazon and you wanna buy a product quickly, there's a reason that there's not a salesperson of any sort sitting on the other end of the line between you and the product you wanna pay for. It's because the experience is too transactional, right? You don't wanna spend time, effort, and energy dealing with the salesperson to buy something that is consumable so quickly. And the same thing applies to B2B. If your sales cycle is 30 days or shorter, you simply don't have enough time to introduce a qualification step with an SDR and a handoff to their sales rep. It's not worth it and it makes for a poor customer experience for your prospects and will actually point you away from adopting an account-based sales development model. So we've included a number of other uh, decision points in this infographic that you can dive through and see if the model is a fit for you. If you get to the end of this and say, wow, ABSD is right for our business, the next thing you're probably thinking about is how do I equip this team? What do I need to invest in uh, from a technology standpoint to make my SDR team successful? Um, and that's what Lars is going to talk about a little bit here. Yeah, and that's, I'd say, probably one of the most exciting um, aspects of sales and marketing in the last five to 10 years is not necessarily the art of selling and marketing, but the science. The number of sales, MarTech and RevTech companies that have come onto the scene helping marketers and sellers understand who the right targets, uh, the right companies that we should be targeting and the right personas and titles within those companies, that information has never been easier to 
to, to curate and easier to scrape and easier to fill into our own CRM and marketing automation. And so what we've done here is we've aimed to bring to you what we believe is the ultimate account-based sales development tech stack. And because we realize that um, companies that are younger in their maturity cycle want to get going with this, we've created an infographic for early stage companies. And uh, we have a, a toggle here that um, if you're more mat mature, maybe series B and beyond, um, you can take a look at some of the different vendors uh, that can be brought to bear to help you instrument and tool your high velocity account-based inside sales or SDR team. Uh, Travis, why don't you take it from here? Absolutely. So even this pared down ultimate tech stack can be a little bit overwhelming for companies that are implementing account-based sales development for the first time. So I just wanted to give a call out to a few key foundational vendors and technologies here that you should look at first before incrementally adding uh, other technologies that we've listed here. Really the heart and soul of any sales development team is activity management, uh, campaigns, touch points, messaging. How do I actually manage my day and manage my workflow? And a new category called sales engagement has just exploded over the last several years with vendors like Outreach and Sales Loft that are purpose built to prescribe the journeys that your SDR team are gonna take prospects through and also feed back the analytics and the insights that you need as a management team to tell what's working and what's not working. It's an absolutely foundational piece of the stack here. Another area that I'd like to highlight is data providers. So actually understanding who is the right company to target right now, but more particularly, who are the right buyer personas within that account? And how do I curate a list of highly relevant contacts to reach out to who I know will benefit from my solution or will find what I have to say interesting? Uh, providers like Zoom Info, Lead IQ, and Clearbit are absolutely the front run runners in this part of the market. And a final uh, technology that I know has solved a lot of pain in my past lives and Lars's past lives is a company called Lean Data. Uh, and Lean Data basically solves the problem of connecting all of the leads, all of the activities, everything that your marketing team is uh, kicking off if they're doing things right and bringing that back to an account-based model. So how do you connect all of that activity and demand that's happening across your various marketing channels and bring that back into an account-based view of the world? Lean data is that connective tissue that sits behind everything. Everyone on here is an awesome vendor. We encourage you to uh, do your homework, reach out to us if you have questions on different technologies, but those are a few of my favorite standouts. That's awesome. So now, um, if you have guided yourself to understanding that you are a candidate for account-based sales development and you've gone ahead and taken our recommendations and built out a tech stack to support that motion, um, then let's get real tactical here and help you understand what some of our recommendations are with respect to you know, SDR on the front line, instrumented, enabled, onboarded, and ready to go. What do some of the touch patterns look like uh, when sending out emails and leaving voicemails and maybe including uh, video or even uh, you know, sending uh, of gifts and cards? Um, we have uh, been trialing this in all of our clients and uh, here to now explain some of our best practices in both handling inbound and outbound. Travis, why don't you take him through our, our latest infographic? Absolutely. So I think if you ask anybody who's conducting prospecting motions, who's responsible for generating pipeline and getting the interest of buyers in the market, uh, if you ask them if it's gotten harder or easier to get the attention of folks over the last several years, I think you'd get the same answer every single time and that it's obviously gotten much, much harder. Five years ago, you could send you know, two or three really targeted personalized emails and get a great outcome. Today, noise in the market, distraction, 
uh, have become that much greater. And the onus is on sales development teams to really stick through a much longer touch pattern. So extending out that time, increasing the number of touches that are happening, particularly on the outbound side, and above all, engaging buyers across several different channels. So cold calling's not dead, email isn't dead, a uh, single channel is dead. So now what we're seeing in our client base is that multi-channel approaches are absolutely the key to getting effective results. Now, one caveat I wanna share is everyone's market's different, everyone's product's different, everyone's buyer's different. And it's impossible to prescribe to you the perfect touch pattern that's going to work for you. But what we've done here is compiled four key touch patterns call them cadences, call them sequences, call them flows, that should get you started, right? And it's really important to orchestrate these across a few different dimensions. So what we're looking at here is a tier one account outbound touch pattern. So you can think of this if you're going proactively to a company who may have never heard of your brand and you're trying to solicit an appointment. And this company, this account, you know is high value, it's worth additional investment and personalization, which is why you see an additional number of touches here over a longer period of time with a higher level of personalization. So on the first day, you're giving them a phone call and you're actually personalizing your email down to the individual person level. So this email couldn't have been sent to anybody else. You're also engaging on social, sending a personalized connection request on day four and throughout the rest of the pattern until either you get a reply or you complete the touch pattern. So we'll share this out. There's three other touch patterns you can see at the top and play around with. But again, we encourage you to take these as a starting point, experiment with them rigorously, and then find out what truly works for your buyer and your market. Awesome. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, feel free to uh, download and play with all of these interactive infographics. Hopefully they inspire um, and you've learned uh, a few new things. Uh, Travis and I love talking shop. Feel free to reach out directly and continue the conversation. But have a great rest of the event and uh, thanks for listening.